In today's video, I would like to share with you about what it was like to apply for Google Data Science and actually work in there as a data science role. Let's get started. So my name is Sean. I actually uploaded my last video about two years ago. And recently I wanted to pick it up again because it turns out that there's a pretty good part of market fit back then because around every March or February time, there's a lot of people reaching out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter just asking me about how to apply to MIT business analytics program. So I felt that these kind of knowledge sharing is very interesting. And when I was looking it up on YouTube about Google data science, I realized that there were not enough contents about how to lead people to apply for these roles and what these roles actually were like. So I'm going to talk more about my personal experience here. So back in July, 2021, I joined Google as a product analyst, which was a general role for data science, in Google. A general role here basically means that you will not be matched up with a team specifically when you are applying for this role, but instead, once you finish your interview processes, you're going to be matched up with a bunch of different teams and talking to their hire managers so that you will find the best match for you. And alternatively, you could also apply for a specific role. For example, when I was applying for Google, I didn't apply for product analyst at the beginning. My first role that I applied was called Quantitative Revenue Analyst. It was very specific to the product because they just happened to be needing that role and there was no general track that would fit into it. So that's something that you could try as well if you want to break into the data science industry. So my referral was submitted back in late 2020 and it was uh, taking a bit of time until about February or March 2021 when I got my first phone screen interview with the HR. And then the HR was kind of just talking to me through why you're interested in this role. Do you actually know the referral person who gave you this link and the things like that. Um, and after that, I kind of also got one SQL interview as well as a product sense case study. After that, things got a little bit interesting because I did not hear anything back from the HR. So I reached out to another hiring manager who were hiring for this product analyst role. Um, and I didn't know it was a general role. So I was just like, hey, I'm interested in your team. Is there any opportunity out there? And then he said, yes. So we had a call, even though I was already interviewing with Google. And then he kind of talked to his own recruiter and then telling them that, hey, there's this guy who's already been like working with Google on his interviews, and he's just interested in if it's possible to be interviewing for his own team. And basically I then just brought onto the product analyst track for an offsite interview because they believed that my previous interview processes went pretty smoothly. So during the offsite day or the open day, it took me a pretty long time to finish all the five interviews and then they were all crammed in one day. So it was pretty tiring. And after that day, it took about one or two weeks until the HR kind of reached back to me and said, hey, congratulations, there's some good news. You're, you're up, you're, there's some positive news. And then uh, we kind of started the team matching process for another one or two weeks. And after that, they kind of brought my package to the so-called hiring committee and what high committee does is that they bring in all the leaders in the ladder that you're applying to, which in my case was product analyst. And then all the ladders leads kind of sit together and then go through the comments or feedback that you got for all the interviews you had in the past. And I had about eight or nine rounds of interviews already back then. And after the hiring committee, something interesting happened. The HR got back to me and said, Hey Sean, you know what? I have some not so bad news. We need another additional interview from your side. And I was like, what do you mean by that? And then they were like, oh, because they wanted more evidence that you can, you're capable of doing SQL and the business case studies. Maybe it was because that my degree wasn't very specialized in SQL, so I kind of have to pick it up on side. And um, I, I solved the problem a little bit slower than they expected. So they added another SQL interview for me, as well as a product case study. And then I kind of um, got matched up to the current team I have. So that's the whole experience for my interview. And uh, it wasn't the usual interview, but then I guess everybody's interview experience could be very different. But overall, you can break it out into a few main steps. And the first step is that you kind of always need a referral and then make sure that you talk to the referral person to ask if there is any specific roles that they're hiring or are they just referring you for general purposes. And then the HR is gonna start phone screening with you, uh, after which you will be uh, sort of assigned with a bunch of different interviewers from all across the company. You could get, possibly get questions from AB test for a specific product case, 
You could possibly get product manager like interview questions, for example, how do you improve a feature? How do you launch a feature? And how do you assess that using your data science skills? And last but not least, of course, you'll be tested with your machine learning and statistics knowledge, but then it really depends on the role. For example, product analyst is more on the product manager side of the spectrum for data science roles at Google, whereas a data scientist role is more on the engineering side. So it depends on which role you're applying to. The questions could be varying due to the technical kind of um, capabilities required. But then make sure that you understand the general modeling and things like that. So yeah, that was the interview process. And then last but not least, definitely practice a lot before you kind of hop onto your um, final offsite day because sometimes these kind of interviews, they're pretty standard. So you just really, really need to pass through it. And then in reality, you of course will pick up new things every day. And then they're not necessarily just SQL or Python skills. There are a lot of like soft skills that you need to pick up from the work. But then in the interview process, it's very difficult to assess that. So, you know, we got to play the game and then kind of pass through that test um, in order to be able to learn all those things that come along after. In terms of working as a product analyst within Google, it's very interesting. It's so different in a way that um, in school, you kind of just focus on your academic theories and then kind of practicing a project with your teammates who are probably majoring the same thing or not. But then in a real world setup, you really need to think about what are the high level objectives for this product team? Why do they need data support overall? Is that like a necessity to run some machine learning models or they just really, really want a root cause analysis or we call it deep dive analysis throughout the funnel in order to understand better of their business problems. So in order to do that, I think there are a few things that are really, really important. The first thing is that you really, really need to use the product that you're working on because that's very important for you to get sort of the intuition and the product sense, the real products and that matter to your product because that is the basis for a data science person to actually contribute to the team because you need to be the user and the product manager at the same time. And after you have a pretty good understanding about your product, what's really important is that you really need to know what kind of data are available and what are not. And for those data which are available, are they sufficient to answer a product or business question? If yes, then congratulations, you don't have to go through a lot of the end work, but then if not, man, this is gonna be something interesting because you kind of need to work together with the engineering team to help log those information, which might take a long time, and that might not be on the top of their priority list. So that leads to the third point that I was gonna bring up, which is priorities. It's always about priorities because for companies like Google, there's so many things they can do and there's, there's so many things that they want to do. But then eventually the top priorities are the ones that actually get delivered and executed because everybody has the same goal so that everybody kind of work together towards that same goal. You might be able to spend 20% of your time just to work on a smaller project, but then yeah, that's your free time, go for it. But then when it comes to the quarterly or half year or final annual year goals, you really, really need to know what are the top focuses right now for the product. And as a data science person, we're actually at an advantage because we kind of can participate in that goal setup journey because we understand the data. We know exactly what trends are for this product, for their user usage, for example, for uh, our competitors' situations, as well as you know, like some of the internal metrics that you could check to get to know better if uh, uh, the engineering team or the product managers are thinking about the same thing that the data are telling us. And last but not least, what's really, really important as a data science person in a product team is that you really need to care about this product. And what I mean by care is that when you look into deep dive analysis, when you think about a model that might be helpful for you to forecast something or for you to predict something, these things are actually the problems that you want to solve, that you see the pain points and you want to use data science to help people shape a good understanding of why these problems matter. So in order to do that, it is really different from, hey, here's a feature, let's build it. And what kind of language do we use? And when do we need to actually productionize it? Instead, it's really about, hey, do, do we actually care about this problem? And why do we care about that? And in order to care as a product analyst or as a data scientist, you really, really need to understand why this problem matter to this product. And in order to do that, you need to think about how users use it 
You need to care about how the results of your data science analysis will be used by the leadership group instead of you know just them looking at it just like when they're reading a newspaper and then checking the metrics and that's it. That is not what we want. That is not something that data science can make impact on. Data science people make impact by having a really good knowledge of data science skills and people know that you have a good skill set for all of these things while at the same time you really understand what your users needs and what your leadership group care about and you can correct them if they are wrong. And when I say wrong, of course there's no black and white, but then data can tell us something. You are responsible for doing that. So at the end of this video, I would like to share maybe a few general tips or just my genuine thoughts with you guys. The first thing would be data science models or machine learning models are just a tool. They might or might not be the most important thing for solving a real world problem. So you really, really need to work in a team with other people to understand what exactly matter to this team and what areas could data science help the most. That is more important than understanding the detail of the most advanced model out there on the market. Number two would be try to think about yourself as a product manager with a strong quantitative perspective. When you work in a tech company, you're not just working on models, unless you're working at Google X or Google Brains, where modeling are the only thing that you should focus on because you need to publish a paper. And when I say thinking like a product manager, try to think about what users need. Try to think like an entrepreneur where you need to understand what exactly the pain points are that your product is trying to solve and what are the competitors doing. And are they doing something really good that we cannot compete with? Is there something that we can improve on that? After you ask yourself all of these questions, you should look for answers from data to support your arguments and then propose that to your leadership group. I think that's really, really, really important for this career. And number three, and last but not least, every product is different. Just like every context you learn in your machine learning books is different. For example, you could apply your skills in healthcare, you could be working in a fintech company, you could be working on YouTube, which is a creator economy platform. All of these really, really differ from each other, so try not to stop learning. There's always something you need to learn. DS skills are just tools or a way to think. Try to use these tools well for yourself to learn better about these contexts so that you can actually pick up an industry quickly and then try to answer some of their most difficult questions with their data science skills. And last but not least, please let me know how you feel about the content of this video. And if you have any questions, please leave your comments down below. And feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm always happy to answer any questions regarding data science careers or graduate programs out there on the market. Best of luck.